Patrick, in trying to understand what we are as human beings, one of the things we have to consider is our place in the animal kingdom. Um, is it on a linear spectrum? Are there step function differences when you talk about human beings? And if, and if they are, what causes them? From your perspective in neuropsychology, particularly as you've studied religion, sleep, what are the kinds of things we can say about the uniqueness of human beings? Um, well, animals don't reflect on their dreams, as far as we know. They, they dream, but they don't reflect on them. Human beings reflect. Human beings have awareness. Human beings have a lot of tools that support awareness. Uh, I think one of the areas where we're especially unique, and I, and I think it's not commented on enough, is the area of the awareness of self, the experience of the self the I, the ego. Obviously, animals have a strategic sense, they, you know, but they don't have a sense of identity, themselves persisting over time and having ultimate values at stake in who they are and what they do and that sort of thing. Um, but human beings do. And the reason why we do is because of the self, this sense of self. A self has in uh, enormous depth, it has history, it has huge concerns if you have children, if you, if you, what goals you have, you know. Our emotions have this sort of, um, I think it's too, too dramatic to say infinite quality, but you know, very intense quality to them. And that is why we suffer so much as well. I don't think animals suffer as much as human beings. Of course they suffer. They hurt. They They're in pain, pain, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but human beings can really be tortured for days after, you know, months, years, and, and aware of it, aware of just how far they've fallen, just how, just how good it could be and just how far from being good it could be. Whereas that's not the case with animals. I mean, who the hell knows, really? <laughs> you know, we can't talk to animals, but it's everything we know about their brains and the way they behave... Yes, they suffer. Yes, they feel pain. But the lack of awareness of self, you know, suggests that it's limited for them, and at least in some senses, whereas it's potentially unlimited for us. And that's, that's, that's our, the bane of our existence, and that, that's also what confers nobility on human beings. Mm -hmm. What can we learn from uh, some of the areas you've studied, like in terms of dreams? We can see that animals seem to dream. Uh, they have some of the same brain patterns that human beings do w during those dream episodes. Uh, uh, significant differences in humans when, when we dream? Well, we don't know. <laughs> we, you know, when, when we uh, lesion the areas of the brain that inhibit REM sleep in cats, let's say, then when cats start to act out their dreams, as far as we know. So when you, you make a, a uh, destruction in the brain in, in the area that, that causes paralysis during mm -hmm. rapid eye movement sleep, right. which we have our most vivid dreams. Yeah, you knock out those areas, so now the, the animal expresses its dreams. And this happens in human beings, too, when you knock out those inhibitory areas. Through disease, yeah. Right, you get remedy. But you can do it deliberately in animals to see what happens to try to maybe right. help. And so what, they, what, what, do you find? what the cats do is, is instinctual behaviors. They, they pantomime chasing a mouse, you know, they, and, and being a predator. Even though they're asleep. Yeah, mm -hmm. their brain waves are asleep. Mm -hmm. But they, they act out chasing, chasing a a prey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this has been done dozens of times and it's re reproducible and so forth. Well, and that, uh, therefore it sounds like there's not, not a lot of difference between <clears throat> the way humans would behave in animals. It same, same, seems like a pretty much a gradient. There's a gradient, that's for sure, but there are qualitative differences, yes. When, when you knock out the inhibitory areas for REM sleep in humans through disease, you see people acting out their dreams and there certainly is a lot of aggression. That's what you commonly see. But there's, there's other things as well. There's suffering. Oh. There's intense emotions. There's, in, in, there's intense care for family members in the dream. Mm. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a sense of awareness of self and how the self can be threatened or, in, or enriched by interactions with all the other characters. There's not a single-minded focus on 
um, killing somebody or being killed. You okay, know? okay. There's all this other stuff going on, and that's obviously the stuff that makes us unique. How about the world of religion? Uh, how does that um, how does that impact uh, the uniqueness of human beings? Um, as far as we know, animals don't have supernatural agent con concepts. Um, you know, some people have suggested... Some people would say they're better off for not having it. Absolutely. It could, very well could be, yeah. Um, religion has brought a lot of suffering to, to human beings, and that's for sure. Um, but I think religion also um, allows us to express what's worse than us, and it sort of takes the, the, the absolute dross of humanity, the most disgusting aspects of humanity, and it magnifies it. And it takes the no, most noble aspects of humanity and magnifies it. So you get saints and you get absolutely hypocritical sinners and killers, all calling themselves religious. So religious, re religiosity in that, in that sense is all about our uniqueness. It says, here, I'm taking what's absolutely unique in human beings and I'm blowing up into this. I'm manifesting it on a major, major scale. And let the chips fall where they may for for human societies, you know. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of uh, reflection on human beings uh, from your own studies and dreaming and religion, uh, how unique are we? Utterly unique. Utterly unique. We're, I, I think that's banal to say because it's so obvious. Yes, there's a continuum. We're animals. There's no obviously. You can't understand human beings without evolutionary biology. But we, we are absolutely unique. And in, in, in one sense, it's utterly banal because every animal is unique. But we're off the scale in terms of brain, size, capacity, functions. We're off the scale in terms of the amount of suffering we inflict on cons, on other, on cons specifics. Other animals really don't do that. You know, chimps and monkeys may, may kill a, a juvenile monkey, but and, and there may be raids and that kind of thing on, on vulnerable um, juveniles, but there's not organized mass slaughter. You don't know, maybe in ant colonies, but you know we're we're really unique in our killing capacity and in, in the ways in which we're noble as well. And religion sort of magnifies all that. It's like having the religion is like having this in, it's like having nuclear weapons in the hands of children. You know? It's it's frightening.